GitHub Desktop is cool and all, but wouldn't it be nice if you could work with Git inside the tools you already use? Common full-featured code editors, such as VS Code, have built-in Git integration, so we can commit and sync directly from our editor. Let's jump right in and install VS Code if you don't already have it. In the browser, navigate to code.visualstudio.com. If you don't want to type the link, you can find it in the lesson links at the bottom of this lesson. It takes us to the VS Code Downloads page. It already knows what platform you are using, so click the button to download the application. If the suggested download isn't what you want, use the arrow and select the desired Stable Installer. Notice that VS Code is available on all major platforms. The application is then downloaded and ready for you to install. I already have it installed on my system. If you want to try out the upcoming demos, pause the video and install VS Code now. I'll close the tab and go back to the slides. Recall that installing GitHub Desktop does not install Git. But to work with Git from VS Code, we will need to install Git. Back in the browser, navigate to git-scm.com slash downloads. If you don't want to type the link, you can find it in the lesson links at the bottom of this lesson. This takes us to the Git Downloads page. Select the appropriate platform, download the installer, and install it. I already have it installed on my system. The installer asks numerous questions for configuring Git. In most cases, going with the default is your best answer. The one default you may want to change is the name of the initial branch when creating new repositories. I override the default name and instead select Main. When the installation is complete, if you want to confirm your installation, in a command window, type git space dash dash version. It should display your version of git. With that in place, let's close the window, close the tab, and return to the slides. For this demo, and most of the later demos in this course, you'll need a set of HTML files to commit to a repository and later publish on the internet as a website. If you coded along with the prior course in this series, A Gentle Introduction to HTML for Beginners, we built a virtual Pet Cafe website. Feel free to use that Pet Cafe folder. If you don't have a Pet Cafe folder, create one. You can then download the code from the HTML course. Here's the link to my GitHub repo for that course. If you don't want to type the link, you can find it in the lesson links at the bottom of this lesson. Following the link, I'm on the GitHub repo for the HTML course. Click the Code button and select Download Zip. It will download all of the code as a zip file. Click to open the downloaded zip file. Navigate down to the Pet Cafe folder. In another window, open the Pet Cafe folder you created. Then drag and drop the files from the zip file folder to your Pet Cafe folder. And now you have the files ready to go. Let's go back to the slides. To get an idea of what we'll be editing, here's the Finnish Pet Cafe website. The home page introduces the website. The Meet Our Virtual Pets page displays a list of our virtual pets. Here's the detail for one of the virtual pets. And the user can create a custom virtual pet using this page. But the files we just downloaded only have the HTML. No nice styling. Yet. So the site won't look exactly like these screenshots. With everything installed and our files ready to go, let's use VS Code and initialize a repository for our pet cafe.